Good evening, family. Welcome to worship this evening. It's Thanksgiving Eve. We're gathered together as a family. We're here to give thanks to God for all that he has done for us, is doing, and will be doing, especially through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Tonight, the gospel lesson is Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. The sermon is based on that passage. The title is Tenth Leper. Uh, we'll have the sharing of the bread. A very special service the, the, this evening. Very, very excited about it. As we begin our worship, please stand and greet each other in Christian love. Peace. Oh my gosh. As we return to our seats this evening, please remain standing for the opening song. Open the eyes of the blind There's no one left 
God. Our God is greater. Our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our Lord gathers us together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The scriptures are very clear in God's word to us. If God be for us, who can be against us? Our God is indeed stronger and strongest, and he calls us to gather in his name and to come to him in truth, understanding his love for us and his grace that's poured out upon us and his forgiveness that is there. Sometimes the greatest obstacle for us is ourselves. We sometimes will block the very love of God that he is trying to reach into our lives to touch us and to grant us his grace. The scriptures declare to us that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and God who is just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We confess. Almighty and ever-living God, you have declared to us in your holy word, if you are for us, then who can be against us? Forgive us for the times that we have raised a wall against you, dear Lord. The times that we have hurt one another by words and actions, some of which we'd like to take back, and some things and some actions and some words that we're virtually proud of. Forgive us, we pray. We are your children. We are the sheep of your pasture. You love us and you embrace us. Given us through the power of your Son, his life, his death, his resurrection. Jesus, our Lord, we come before you tonight, thankful for many things in our lives, but most of all, we praise you and thank you for the forgiveness you grant us through your shed blood and the seal and promise that is given with the resurrection that we are forgiven. For it is in the matchless name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Our Lord Almighty God declares to us in his word that we are forgiven and we are redeemed in his name. He gives us the power to be the children of God and he reminds us of that grace, the undeserved gift of life and life everlasting to each of us. The devil will try to point out to us that we're undeserving and we simply answer him, yes we are, except Jesus our Lord calls us worthy. In his name, through his grace, his life, death, and resurrection. So as a called and ordained servant of the word, and by his authority, I declare to you what he says. You are forgiven and redeemed in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. We thank you, Almighty God, that you have gathered us this night into this place, that we celebrate because you have set before us the grand feast and celebration. We praise you and we thank you for the gift of your Son. And as tonight we gather as family and friends and the family of Jesus Christ in this place, we give you thanks for all with which you've blessed us and for the very joy of knowing that our eternal God loves us, forgives us, and calls us out by name. We praise you and thank you for this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Please be seated as we hear the word of the Lord. The 
the first lesson from Deuteronomy chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. The whole commandment that I command you today you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot did not swell these forty years. Know then in your heart that as man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and by fearing him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs flowing out in the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land in which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you can dig copper. And you shall eat and be full, and you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. This is the word of our Lord. The second reading from the epistle, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good, and it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the gospel. Our gospel tonight is from Dr. Luke, chapter 17, starting at the 11th verse. Glory to you, o Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, he was passing along between Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered a village, he was met by ten lepers who stood at a distance and lifted up their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleaned, they were cleansed. Then one of them, when he saw what he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice, and he fell on his face at Jesus' feet, giving him thanks. Now he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus answered, Were not ten cleansed? Where are the nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Rise and go your way. Your faith has made you well. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Almost want to stop for a pit stop on the way down here. <laughs> Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The text for the sermon today is Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. The title of the sermon is Tenth Leper. It's Thanksgiving Eve, and I have many things to be thankful for. I'm thankful for Cheryl, my wife of 21 years. I'm thankful for my children, whom I not only love, but also like, bonus round. You're always going to love them, but if you can like them, that's awesome, good stuff. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, the home in, that we have in Cooper City that I've come to refer to as the Agape House. 
uh, where the love of the congregation made it possible for me to not have a long drive back and forth to Naples every day. Thankful for this amazing family, Gloria Day. Thankful for the merger that made that amazing family bigger and even more amazing. Thankful for ministry with a, a real brother and friend in Christ um, that I, I just never dreamed we'd have that. So much to be thankful for. The list could go on and on, but I want to turn to you. What are you thankful for this evening? What are you thankful for? This is a time set aside for us to return thanks to God for all that he has done for us, all he is doing, all he will be doing, and especially what he's doing for us in Jesus Christ. And it's important that we do this, particularly here in this land, because we have so much. We are fabulously wealthy compared to most of the rest of the world. A great concern that I have is that in the midst of all this wealth and abundance, even given the financial situation we've been in for the past several years, even given that we have so much, I think sometimes we take quite a bit for granted. I've had the blessing over the past couple of years to make three mission trips to Haiti. And there I've received a big honk and slice of humble pie. Um, it was there uh, in Haiti that uh, entered into worship in Go Naive, at Faith Lutheran Church. I've mentioned this before, I think after I got back from the last trip. We worshiped there. And for part of the service, the congregation is led in prayer. And they're led in prayer out loud. They're asked to give thanks, to give praise, to pray to God directly. And they do. Each person... Uh, giving thanks for you know, whatever it is that God is doing in their life, but it's all out loud and it's all at the same time. And it's amazing. It's an incredible experience to hear the prayers of the church ascending before God. Even more incredible uh, is what happened next. Now, I kind of stood there with everybody else on our mission team, and it was awesome. And even though you don't know the language, you can tell the sincerity and the, and the, the heart that's in these prayers. But I remember thinking with my American mind that this isn't going to last very long. It's nice and everything, but this, you know, how long could this possibly go? They're not going to be giving thanks for their car. They don't have a car. They're not going to be giving thanks for their TV, they don't have one, their computer don't have one. Uh, even for the things we take for granted here, electricity, running water, yeah, pretty much don't have those things. Family members, you know, many of whom were lost to things that could be fixed simply here. You know, they don't even have a corner store to run down and grab some aspirin. This isn't going to take you know, very long. It, it wasn't snarky or anything like that. It was just an observation from my culture about theirs. And then they began to pray, and they lifted their voices in heartfelt prayer. And they gave thanks for being alive that morning. They gave thanks for the breath they were taking. They gave thanks for... And, and, and because they weren't colored by too much, because they weren't jaded by all of the toys they had, you know, because they weren't immersed in a culture of plenty. They gave thanks to God for any and all of the very simplest things that it probably would never occur to us to give, thankful, give thanks for. And then they went, and they gave, and they gave. And this thing went 10 minutes, then it went 15 minutes, and then it went 20 minutes. And then it went 30 minutes. And they actually had to be stopped at 45 minutes of giving thanks. These people in utter destitution. I mean, when you land in Haiti, you pop down in a whole new and very third world. You know, where what vehicles there are are just beat to smithereens and held together by pieces of wire and tremendous ingenuity where you can't take for granted things like paved roads. Where electricity, if it stays on just through the night, already means tomorrow is a good day. Where you shower in the morning from an ice-cold rooftop tank full of larvae and whatever else is in there, I don't want to know. 
I know Cheryl doesn't want to know. <laughs> and where they eat, the average person, once every other day, rice and maybe a little goat if it's a really good day. And they gave thanks and they gave thanks and they gave thanks and they poured out their hearts before Almighty God and they gave thanks and they gave thanks. And I was humbled to be there. Humbled. Humbled. And even a bit ashamed because of this simple destitute people and their ability to thank and thank and thank and thank and thank and to go on and have to be stopped after 45 minutes of thanking so the service could continue. I've met lots and lots and lots of people from a lot of different places. But I was blessed there in Haiti to meet a whole church full of 10th lepers. In the gospel lesson today, Jesus is moving along between Galilee and Samaria. And there along the roadside, there are 10 lepers. Leprosy is a horrible disease. Now, we've pretty much eradicated it in North America, but in various places in the world, man, leprosy is awful. It's horrible. It's flesh eating and tissue eating and everything else eating. Um, people lose their nose, their ears, they lose limb, fingers first and then limbs. Uh, there's, it creates a pretty foul odor from the rotting of the flesh. People are ostracized. I mean, imagine being, you know, having to remove yourself from your family and your community and everything that you've known in the midst of having a horrible disease, no longer being able to have human touch. Just imagine that. No more human touch. You're a social pariah. You have to go... No way, no way to, to earn a living. Your limbs don't work anymore. How are you going to eat? Completely at the mercy of people around you. That's these people at the side of the road calling out to Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he does. Jesus has mercy on them. Go show yourselves to the priests. The point there is that it was the priests who could verify that they were clean and they could re-enter society. And so they take off, and partway there they realize they're healed, and they're leaping and shouting. You can imagine it. Look at me! Look at me! And, you know, grabbing people on the road. Look at me! I was a leper and I'm healed. I can get my life back. I can get my farm back. I can get my... my... Wait till I show those people that threw me out of town. Look at me! Not realizing the one guy who was back down the road from them. The one standing with his hands outstretched, his new hands, trembling, with the full realization of what happened hitting him. I've been healed by Jesus, and I didn't deserve it. I didn't earn it. This isn't about me. I didn't do anything. The might and the mercy of God just split through human space and time and healed me and made me whole. And the faint echoes of the nine, look at me, look at me, fade into the distance. And the one trembling and filled with awe spins around and runs on brand new legs, throws himself down in the dirt face down before Jesus. And scripture says, in a loud voice, with a ton of passion, gives thanks to God. We have so much to be thankful for. And we have to really watch out. Complacency and apathy, man. They creep right in. The old Adam loves that. The old Adam is fascinated with self, worships the idol of self. Please me, serve me. You know. We're so used to having things here. When our power goes out, we start looking at the watch, start looking at the, well, if you still wear a watch, looking at the clock, right? Getting on the phone. Where's my power? We're entitled. We deserve it. Where's my power? You know, never mind the crews out there in danger 
with a storm raging, you know, fixing the transformer that got knocked out. We have a lot to be thankful for. Even in the midst of this financial crisis, we have tons to be thankful for. We're sitting here in this place, in the most powerful nation on earth, arguably the wealthiest nation on earth, even in the midst of financial trouble, relatively comfortable with all kinds of safety nets that nobody else has. With family, with friends, with church in this place, and this incredible family, Gloria Day. We have so much to be thankful for. But you know what most of all? We're thankful for Jesus Christ. You see, they can take away the house, they can take away the cars, they can take away the whatever. And people can come and go. We can lose maybe even a spouse, parents, child. Whatever it is we lose in this life, what they can't ever take away is your salvation in Jesus Christ. The thanksgiving of the tenth le uh, leper is so powerful because he realizes that he didn't earn it, he didn't deserve it, he received this healing, and nothing can ever take that away. Jesus says, where's the other guys? Where's the other guys? Weren't there ten healed? And only this one comes back, a foreigner? No. There's double entendre there. There's a little extra meaning. Get a little jab at the good Jews following him who made fun of the Samaritans because they weren't of pure blood and heritage. But the real meaning for you and for me has to do with that word foreigner. We're foreigners. We're aliens. We're strangers. We're conceived and born in sin, the enemy of God, not belonging to his kingdom, not wanting to be in his kingdom, worshiping the idol of self, turning our backs on him. We're the illegal aliens. This is heaven, buddy, speak Aramaic, or whatever. Well, well everybody knows God speaks German, but I'm saying. You know. <laughs> you know. And in spite of that, Jesus says, nope. By grace, through faith, your family. Your family. And in the waters of holy baptism, God claimed you as his very own, washed away your sin, granted you salvation and eternal life, set the Holy Spirit to dwell within your heart. And in spite of the fact that we're still broken and the old Adam's constantly battling us, tearing us down, Jesus keeps calling, come back, come back. Feeding us on his own flesh and blood for the forgiveness of our sins, coming to us, word and sacrament ministry, bracing us up holding us fast in one true faith by the power of the Spirit until we receive the inheritance that is ours in Jesus Christ. We have so much to be thankful for, material stuff, people stuff, relational stuff, financial stuff, all kinds of stuff, but most of all, by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, you're forgiven, you're saved, and you have eternal life. Knowing that, who are you going to be, people of God? Who are you going to be? Are you going to be one of the nine? Look at me. I prayed five times before I ate my Fruit Loops. Are you going to be the tenth leper? In Jesus' name, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, amen. At this time, we're going to do something different. We're not going to have the creed or the prayers of the church, um, but we are going to pray. I'm going to ask you to stand. I mentioned that while we were in Haiti, we had observed this amazing prayer of the church where everybody gave thanks out loud in their own way to God. And so tonight going to ask the family here to, to do that. We'll start the prayer together, and I'll say with you, I thank you, God, for. And then after we get four out of the way, you let her rip. 
Thank God for your spouse, your children, your folks, your friends. Thank God for your job or your hobby or your motorcycle. Thank God for <laughs> whatever. But pastor, aren't we all going to be saying different things? Yes, that's the point. But isn't that going to be chaos? No, it's not. Anybody walking in here would know just what we're doing, giving thanks to God for all of his goodness to us. Don't worry. What if I run out of stuff to say? Don't worry about it. Just think about it for a moment. More stuff will come to you. But, and, and don't just list off stuff. Say why. I thank you, Lord, that in the morning I wake up and my wife is still there putting up with me after two decades. That's a real prayer, by the way. Do you see what I mean? Don't be embarrassed. This is not about show or poetry or how great you can pray. This is you pouring out your heart back to God, giving him thanks for everything, the breath you just took, for everything. In three, two, one, I thank you, God, for Cheryl. Degree that I'm going to have. I thank you, Lord God, for your spirit dwelling in power among this people. Thank you for the ministry that they're going to engage in. I thank you, Lord God, for all of these people. I thank you that they're here. Thank you for this family and the food and the service of my wife and my children. Thank you for the young people. I thank you for this place and this ministry. Thank you for the sacrifice of Christ. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go ahead and finish. What you heard tonight was the prayer of the church ascending before God Almighty, a people of God devoted and loving and so deeply appreciative for all that God is doing in our lives that they would take the time, take the effort to be a little uncomfortable, to do something new, and to speak it out loud. Uh, awesome. Great stuff. So proud uh, that you could all engage in this. And so thankful to be present among each and every one of you who are definitely, definitely the tenth leper. Please be seated. This time we'll take up our offering.
God, our Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon this bread. We thank you for all the provision that you give to us, the way you take care of us, the way you provide for our every need. This bread represents your loving care, your tenderness, your kindness in giving us so much that we do not deserve. And even as you bless this bread, we ask you to continue to bless us, to continue to give us our daily bread, to provide us with house and home, with wife, with children, all that we need for this daily life. We trust you, Father, and we pray with confidence because we know that you hear us and that you will do it. And Almighty God, we, as we look at the bounty before us, food and drink for which we are thankful, we also recognize the great gift you give to us with those who are seated by our sides in this place tonight, the very family of God. And for family members that are part of our own immediate families and extended families with whom we work, marry, even snub and exploit at times. And Lord, we give you thanks for the family that you've placed us in at Gloria Day, the joy of the gifts that you've given to each family member here to be used for your kingdom's sake, the joy of having family to go home to. And Lord, we pray for our family here of Gloria Day who are hurting because there are family members in this past year who have departed and entered into eternal glory. And the hearts hurt and lie.